We finally got official gameplay for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, showing us some of the new mechanics for the game. And let me just say, this is looking real promising. So let's take a closer look at it all in this upscaled breakdown, along with what you may have missed. First, let's talk about the game's UI, as it looks almost identical to Breath of the Wilds, but there are a few small additions and changes to it. And the first thing you may notice is the replacement of Sheikah runes, as they have been replaced with Link's new abilities found within his arm. Similar to the Sheikah Slate runes, they have their own individual icons depending on the ability you're using, along with the map now having coordinates to them. Presumably to help the player indicate where they are exactly on the map, as there is now so much height involved. As you can be standing in the same location, either in the sky or on the surface, which would be completely different areas. This will definitely make pinpointing your exact location a lot easier as you won't get confused where exactly it is vertically. But aside from those changes, the UI does share everything else from Breath of the Wilds. The main change of course is those new abilities replacing the Sheikah runes, so let's take a closer look at each one and their designs. Recall seems to be the replacement to the Stasis Sheikah Rune, as instead of freezing an object in place, it lets you reverse the movement of that object, returning it back in time. This can be used on the falling structures from the sky, allowing Link to use it like an elevator back up to the sky where it fell down from. We've also seen Link use this ability to reverse a giant spike ball from rolling down in one of the previous trailers. I wonder if similar to the stasis rune, it could be upgraded and you could use it on enemies. It would sure be hilarious to see enemies go in reverse as an ability. But so far we've only seen it used on objects, but that alone gives it already a lot of versatility. The next ability is Fuse, which seems to be a huge overhaul to the weapons mechanic along with the breakable weapons problem fans had with Breath of the Wild as now you could fuse weapons and other objects together to make them far stronger and give them more durability. And this isn't just about fusing two weapons together, as you can fuse many other things with them, from rocks to monster parts to even food ingredients. This will give all collectibles you come across far more worth than they did in Breath of the Wild, as they all can be used for Link's arsenal. The examples we see are how Link can make a makeshift hammer with a tree branch and a boulder, giving it far more damage and durability, or how he can fuse a pitchfork with a long stick to make an even longer pitchfork, and you can also use monster parts like the ice chew jellies to turn your arrows into ice arrows. I assume the same concept will be applied for each elemental chew jelly respectively. Another monster part though we see fused to an arrow are the Keese's eyeballs. As when fused, they act as a homing arrow to the nearest target. This is something we've seen a glimpse of in the previous trailer as well. And of course, monster parts aren't the end of it, as you can also use food ingredients to fuse two weapons. With Link using a puff shroom, a new type of mushroom for the sequel, on the shield having it explode out a layer of fog when hit while shielding himself, giving Link the chance to sneak strike the enemy as it loses vision while the mist is active. And so far these are just a few of the many different collectibles you can obtain, so the possibilities really seem endless. But this new concept isn't just for Link, as we see an enemy known as a construct use a fused weapon on Link which gives their attack a gust of wind that can knock Link over. I can already imagine so many creative ways for this mechanic, and I cannot wait to explore them myself. Next is probably the biggest game changer to the sequel, that being Ultra Hand. It seems to control similarly to Breath of the Wild's Magnesis Rune, but instead of just manipulating metal objects, you can do so much more with it, and to almost anything as you can glue these objects together, creating something entirely different with them, letting you essentially build with it. This allows Link to create his own objects from vehicles of transportation to presumably so much more. As we see in the gameplay, Link create a raft to get across a body of water. 
And with the mechanical items that you can attach to your builds, they seem to consume battery that recharge when not using it. So obviously this will limit the amount of time you can use your build before having to let it recharge. But with this new ability, there will be so many new methods of transportation all catered to each player and how they build it. And we've seen a glimpse of some of the other builds for transportation in the previous trailer. I can already see this giving the player endless ways of solving and reaching new heights. It really takes the player's creativity to the next level. And while I have seen people compare this to Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, as they are somewhat similar, Nintendo has clearly made this concept far less complex by the looks of it, and overall just a ton more fun. I cannot wait for the hilarious creations we'll see fans come up with when the game finally drops. Also, it's worth noting that this ability may be a callback reference to one of Nintendo's toys known as the Ultra Hand, released in 1966 by Gunpei Yokoi. So there is a possibility that this name may be in reference to one of Nintendo's really old toys. But obviously outside the reference, the name makes sense as Link literally has an Ultra Hand able to manipulate objects and combine them together. The last new ability we are shown, but certainly not the least, is Ascend. This allows Link to phase through ceilings, letting him reach the top of it to the other side. In less dense ceilings, it takes a matter of seconds, but in long climbs up, Link seems to somewhat swim his way through it. The effect looks absolutely badass, and I'm excited to see how this replaces the need to climb around each new height you want to take. As stated by Aonuma, you can use this ability anywhere as long as there's a ceiling above you. So there will most likely be tons of scenarios where this comes in handy. And speaking of handy, all these new abilities clearly are powered by Link's new right arm, giving Link the necessary tools to solve all the puzzles he comes across, similar to how Breath of the Wild did with the Sheikah Slate. But unlike the Sheikah Slate which uses the power of the Sheikah Tech, Link's hand uses something different, most likely powered by the Zonai. And this is no longer just a theory, as another thing worth noting is the Construct. These are the enemies we see in the sky that are also lit up with the green aura that Link uses within his hand. And they seem to be the replacement for those Sheikah powered enemies in Breath of the Wild. As this time, instead of powered by the Sheikah, they are powered by the Zonai. Yes, the Zonai theory that Zelda fans have harped on for years, including myself, seems to be true. And this is all confirmed to us when Link defeats one of them, as he picks up a Zonai charge. Clearly that alone indicates that there is a huge connection between them and the Zonai. And these charges that are dropped from them are likely the charges we see on Link's hip, which allows him to fuse weapons together and perform other similar abilities with his arm. So of course the era of this magical technology continues in the sequel, but is replaced with the Zonai rather than the Sheikah. And it's worth noting that we don't see any of the Sheikah tech from the shrines or towers, as they seem to have all vanished. The only piece of Sheikah tech we've seen in the sequel so far is on Zelda, as she seems to have upgraded her Sheikah Slate to a design most likely inspired by Pura. As now with replacing the Sheikah logo on it is with Pura's iconic glasses frame. So clearly there will still be some connection to the Sheikah in the sequel, but with everything Link has, it's clearly connected to the Zonai. And with these new enemies found within the sky, most likely the remains of the Zonai tribe will also be discovered there. Along with Link's new outfit, as it could be a part of what the tribe wore thousands of years ago before being forgotten. Now outside of Link's new abilities found in his arm, Link is also given another upgrade, as Link is now able to skydive similar to how he did in Skyward Sword, making the fall from high areas go real smoothly. And speaking of smoothly, can we just appreciate how seamless Nintendo made jumping from high up in the sky all the way down below? This is what I wish Skyward Sword did when reaching its surface. Instead though, you were given a loading screen and forced to choose an exact location on where to land. So clearly with Tears of the Kingdom, Nintendo is able to evolve on what they had planned over a decade ago with Skyward Sword. As now you are able to plunge from high up into the sky all the way down to Hyrule's surface all in one go. It really is extremely impressive, especially being on the Nintendo Switch. 
And even though I do wish the render distance could have looked a bit better, I can't deny that how it looks so far won't take away from my immersion when playing the game. Seeing a dragon soar the sky from such high heights to the surface below truly feels surreal. Honestly can't imagine what Nintendo could do with actual powerful hardware. And speaking of seeing Hyrule from far up, let's talk about the great Deku Tree and the lack thereof. As when seeing Link dive from the sky to Hyrule's surface, you will notice that all of the Lost Woods and the Great Forest of Hyrule is missing. Not even the fog that shrouded it is there. It really makes you wonder what has happened with Hyrule's surface and what else has changed within the sequel. And it's not like the Koreks have gone missing, as we see a little guy trying to reach a friend in the beginning of the gameplay presentation near the Dueling Peak stable. We can see him also carrying a huge bag that seems to be weighing him down. I really hope those aren't Korok seeds he's carrying or that they will return as a collectible. And I mean, if they do, at least give us a better reward this time around. But sadly, this gameplay reveal only focuses on the few things mentioned and not really much else. While you can sit and dissect each and every area shown for more easter eggs, I mainly want to cover the obvious changes that we've gotten so far. But if you are interested in a more in-depth analysis, please let me know. Overall, I think this was a perfect balance of showing us something new, without necessarily spoiling anything. It was a great teaser for the game, and won't take away from the blind experience when playing. I wonder if we won't be getting much else from here, except obviously a final trailer near launch. If so, honestly, that will do, as I was already sold on the game, but this really gives us a proper taste on what to expect. And remember, this only covered the open world sandbox aspects. We still are in for a full story and narrative Nintendo is trying to keep secret. So I honestly believe this game will be an amazing successor to Breath of the Wild. And for those complaining that the games look too much alike, I mean, it's a sequel. This is what you should expect. I don't think Nintendo should have overhauled the graphics or UI too much. Consider what they did to Majora's Mask to Ocarina of Time. It reused assets from the game, but just gave you more. That is what a sequel is, more of the prequel. I know the Zelda series has had drastic changes in between games before, but again, this is not it. This is a direct sequel, and if you look at it that way, you shouldn't see an issue in the similarities. Also, let me not forget that at the end of the gameplay reveal, Nintendo officially announced the Tears of the Kingdom Edition Switch OLED, Pro Controller, and Switch Carrying Case. All of which look amazing and I will definitely try to get my hands on them. But what do you guys think? And what do you think of the gameplay shown so far? Are you excited? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I would really appreciate it if you left a like on the video to show your support. I have tons of other Tears of the Kingdom related videos coming real soon leading up to its release. And of course when the game releases, expect a full on let's play and much much more content as well. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, as always I've been ZM and I'll see you all in the next one.